Okay. Make sure the mic is working. Yeah, we're good. Okay, whenever you're ready. Hey folks, it's Dr. Peek Ritali here and again. And uh, you know that uh, I started my career on TV with a particular guy named Lee Haney, eight-time Mr. Olympia. When I met him, I think he was six-time Mr. Olympia. We worked together for two years. And the last day that we worked together on our set, I smuggled in a bottle of champagne because I wanted to give Mr. Haney a toast. So he smuggled me into his green room we poured some champagne and I said, Lee, here's to you winning the eighth Mr. Olympia and becoming the greatest champion of all time. And he looked at me and he said, Pete, that's a shitty toast. He says, let me do it. <laughs> he goes, here's to our friendship. That's the type of man he is. Friendship was more important to him than eight time Mr. Olympia. And I got to say, 35 years later, we're still the best of friends and care about each other immensely. So let's bring him on, eight-time Mr. Olympia, Lee Haney. Let's take a seat and have a little interview here for a little bit. I love that intro, Pete. Yeah. I appreciate that. Do you that, remember man. that? You probably yeah. don't even remember that. <laughs> oh, my you goodness. That was, crazy. That, was, that was a few days ago. Yeah, yeah. That was last week. Yeah. And then, you know what? We've been tied to the hip ever since. Yeah, it's true, man. That's I true. I really you know? love you, man. Appreciate it. Love uh, what you do and keeping people healthy. The ICA, Cower Athletica, my team. Yeah, and you've always been a big supporter of chiropractic. Oh, yes, yes. We're gonna have to, we're, we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, but the, the the one question that, that one of the times we were at the Arnold Schwarzenegger event, and I asked you this question, and I don't I wouldn't say the crowd was shocked, but your answer was so beautiful that I want to ask you this question and to start off this interview. What is the number one quality that makes a champion a champion? Well, you know, Pete, uh, a lot of them, when they look upon a person, a champion, you look, most people look at the physical component. Right. You know, nutrition, muscle, exercise, nutrition, you know, so good. all those things. But what I feel, what I've tried to follow all of my life is the things that make champions stand out is humility. Humility. You know, uh, not thinking yourself to be above that which you really are. You know, we, we're a people. You know, and uh, uh, we're tied to one another. You know, the good Lord made us to be dependent upon each other, not independent, being separate from each other. So I've always felt that was that was very important in my life. So I've tried to cultivate relationships over the years because relationships and fellowship with relationship is everything. Right. You gotta have a heart. You gotta have yeah. a heart. Yeah, yeah. That's a, having a heart is the having a heart is, 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 is the key. Is, is the key to it, man. Okay, so let's go. Let's go on. Tell me uh, about your first chiropractic experience, or not? Maybe not the first, but your your most memorable chiropractic well, I, experience. Yeah, I can tell you the first one. <laughs> okay, you know? there you go. Tell us the first. Really, one. your chiropractic experience goes back to something you've done to yourself, right? That maybe you shouldn't have done, right? And I was a. Uh, Probably around oh, 20 years old, something around that, maybe 19. And I was uh, doing a squat, you know, with the weight on the back. I, I don't know, man, if I had over 200 pounds, close to 300, going down with the squat. And I came back at an awkward angle, you know, you know, being that age, something caught my attention. So I'm <laughs> searching the room, you know, when I'm supposed to be doing squats. Right. That's why you got to focus, focus. Keep the mind and the muscle connection together at all times. I didn't know that when I was at that. So I sort of came sideways yeah. and tweaked the back a bit. I, I think of every bodybuilder has done that at some point in life. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So that was my first experience. And there was a professor from uh, Sherman College by the name of Don Thomas. He gave me my first adjustment. He was a member of a Nautilus Fitness Center there in Spartanburg, South Carolina. And that's where Sherman is located. Right. Spartan that's where you're, you're actually That's from. right. So that was my first experience. And man, I was sold after that. And probably about a week and a half of adjustments, you know, maybe twice a week, he had me back back online. So I was 
hey, I was I was totally into chiropractic care ever since that point. That's that's awesome, man. And I remember the first time I adjusted this guy, he was on on the set. Yeah. And I, you know, not only was I one of the cast members of these uh, TV shows, but I was also the the the, 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 the on set the chiropractor. Right. You know, like a cameraman. Yeah. Uh, I remember uh, 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 Kevin Murphy. Uh, right. He, I yeah. still I'm still friends with him. Yeah. And uh, a lot of these people never had an adjustment before, right. so. Not only was I the chiropractor, but I was able to give, turn people on to chiropractic. But I remember the first time I gave you an adjustment, yeah. and 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 you always had wellness adjustments too, right? Because right. you know you 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 had no pain. So you say, hey, give me an adjustment. So he lays down, and when he lays down, he had these. Remember how you used to customize the, the spaghetti yeah. strap shirts? Right. You had, he had a certain way to cut the shirt, so it was like a little t- tiny spaghetti strap. Yeah, and he lays down, and I look, and I said. I'm going to adjust a manta ray <laughs> because his lats look like a manta ray. And then there was a little manta ray, which was his traps on top of it. And I'm like, oh man, this is going to be hard to adjust this guy. But it proved true That's right. that when you are in good shape and you get an adjustment, the adjustment actually flows easier because yeah. when we are adjusting somebody, we are activating their own, their own mechanisms. And if you're in shape, the adjustment, the muscles pull the adjustment into into in, into shape, as p- particularly when it's a wellness adjustment. May not be so when you're when you're in pain. You might you may be you may be guarded and locked. But when you're getting a wellness adjustment, it's a very comfortable experience because you're you're in a more relaxed state. And if you're in shape, and it went, it went beautiful. Yeah. And, and that's something I've always been particularly uh, mindful of, making sure that wellness adjustments was there. You know, I, I I look at it like this. You know, uh, it's just like you know keeping all in the uh, change in your car and get the filter right. and you know going in for a tune-up. So you want to do that on a regular basis because when you do, the body's going to perform better. I mean, and even working with clients, you know, I you know I watch them from behind. If you're working with them, you're looking at all oh, from the front. You're looking at their shoulders and okay, and I say, oh, well, let me ask you this: Have you ever had a chiropractic adjustment? In many cases, they said, no, I haven't. So, well, guess what? You need to get an appointment set up, man. We can't work with you one-sided. Right, Because right. that being the case, you're going to end up causing a further damage to your body. That's correct. So I've always, you know, stressed that upon my clients when I train them. Yeah, when Not I, only for me, but for them, too. When I talk about uh, wellness, I always say to my patients, listen, I got four beautiful, expensive guitars. They need to be. They need to be tuned at least yeah, once or twice a month. Right. You know, Adam Gallup, how how I stay yeah, on? Those still right. strings and you know your spinal cord is kind of like a guitar string. The tension is right. within the spinal cord, and it's particularly the, the, the techniques that we use, sacro occipital technique, which means the t- the connection between the, the 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 skull and the tailbone. Mm-hmm. It is like a guitar string, yeah, and yeah. We're, we're 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 dealing with those uh, those tensions. Now, tell me, uh, this is a nice question. What's your favorite exercise? Oh man. And when I, I say like none of them, <laughs> I've had athletes ask me, what do you like to do most? Nothing. <laughs> play with your grandchildren. Exactly. Play with the grandkids. But but you know what? I've always, with that mindset, I've given each body part an equal amount of, uh, you know, control stress in order to bring about uh, the, the type of uh, improvements on the physique. And you know, Pete, my, uh, my philosophy has always been trained to stimulate, not annihilate. So I've always been careful with that as a result. No injuries. Then the maintenance for chiropractic care. All of those things makes a huge difference. You know, one of the things I, I dealt with in, uh, in past times, and, you know, most of my life is, is that one of my legs is slightly longer, uh, shorter than the other. So my pelvis is having a tendency to shift. And that sort of messed with the, my SI joints. So the chiropractic care always balanced me back out so that I'm not stressing my lower back, keep me feeling good. So uh, that's, I feel that's, that's very, very important. Right. So do, every exercise would you? Every favorite? exercise. I don't have no favorites. Why I can say I like this or not. I don't like any of them. Yeah, but that was, that was the, uh, the, uh, the, the very important point that you just mentioned was your tagline, stimulate don't, don't annihilate. annihilate. Yeah, and we know, know you know, you, it's, it's Elise's birthday today, by the way, everybody. Everybody <laughs> wish him a happy birthday on camera. Uh, hey, they owe me. They owe me at Lee Haney. They owe me. 
I appreciate all the clap, but I love you too. <laughs> Prove your love. Damn <laughs> me. <laughs> but you know, you're 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 uh, you're, uh, you're you're six months older than me. You know, and, uh, why you have to say that? Uh, I, mean, I, I look much you. younger, but uh, because, <laughs> I got, because I got hair. <laughs> but uh, but the, the point is that uh, there are uh, uh, other um, Olympian champions who've had back surgeries and different injuries because they trained so excessively that yeah, their body was magnificent and they may have won some Olympias, yeah. but you are in still tip top, tip top shape. You know, my patients ask me, I'm going out to the Lee Haney's this weekend. How, how is he he's still in shape? I said, the guy, he looks like a, an ex NFL uh, running back. You know, he's still, he's still in shape. He still works out all the time. He still teaches people how to work out. So, so to talk a little bit more about, stimulate and, and, and not annihilate. What does that mean? Does it mean you don't go to failure? Does it mean you go almost to failure? Do you mean you do lots of reps? Do you do heavy reps, light reps? Like what is what was your style of training that you felt that you could protect yourself but still gain the muscle mass? Well, the one thing, uh, Pete, is that, you know, in the era in which I came, you know, I watched legends like Arnold, like Robbie Robinson, you know, Frank Zane, all of these people, you know, they put some great information out past times in publications. You don't see that anymore. Yeah. There's a lot of advertisement, but as far as real knowledge, you know, you, you can't follow what's happening now. During my era, the era before me, you could follow information. Well, we only had magazines. You only had we're, magazines. That's I mean, there was no Instagram. There was no YouTube. Yeah. There, was no, there was no, no, there was no yeah. confusion. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you get with Instagram and YouTube. Right. Confusing. A lot of people really don't know what they're doing. Uh, but you saw legends in the publications that will that would showcase their workout programs. So I learned through what these legends had to say about how many sets, how many repetitions, you know, uh, the importance of the mind and the muscle linked together, feel the rep, feel the sets, you know, when it, and that's something you learn over time, but it was also communicated by great champions. So you learn from that, you apply it, and you see how it works. You know, for me, it has worked very well. You know, the science of training is something uh, that is missing a lot. And philosophy that goes with that science so I followed that very close as being a student of the game. I, uh, you know, just recently I put a picture up of myself, you know, and had Apple Beckles, Jessup Wilkosh, you know, Tom Plass. Uh, it was also Jimmy Gobert, uh, Jessup Wilkosh, Hubert Mess. All of these champions was in there in that photo, but I was the baby of the bunch. Here I am, a 23-year-old, standing there with legends who was like, 40, 50, 60. Oh, oh yeah, Ed Corny was in it too. Right. So sort of I had a chance to follow and watch and see these great champions. And none of them was injured. They were in great shape. They looked good. And so I patterned what I do in the way of training uh, after what I saw them do. Now, as a result of that, here I am. You know, you get a lot of Olympians as of lately, they end up with muscle tears, back injuries, they do a lot of stuff that don't make sense. When you look at the guys of, of times past, Dr. Franco Colombo, for instance, you know, a he great was, chiropractor. Oh, yeah, that? he was not only one of the strongest bodybuilders in the world, he 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 was a chiropractor. So he understood the importance of skeletal health. You know, so when you understand the science of that and you apply that you know, to your training, apply it to uh, uh, maintenance. You uh, apply the concepts of good uh, functional nutrition, you win. Yeah, yeah. And you would say, like, because I, when I, we were training partners on the, on the TV show, we did like you know eight to twelve reps. I would exactly. say yeah. we didn't necessarily use a super heavy weight, no. but but we used enough of a weight About that we got the steel. Yeah, yeah, we got the stimulation. We focused on our form, yeah. and we would superset a lot. Maybe it was just because it was TV, but mm -hmm. super. I was. And we, I still follow that even. Today. Yeah, yeah. I, I superset. Yeah, you go from yeah. chest to back, yeah. bicep, tricep. Yeah. You, you know? don't have to punish the body in order to get it to grow. Right. When you right. punish the body sooner or later, something bad is going to happen. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. So 
I've never gone to the point where I've, I've had no injuries because of using this particular philosophy. And I know that, let's say for leg training, for instance, you know, and a lot of guys and females think, that, okay, I, I want to develop a large quad. So first thing they do is squats. So the squats, we know that's the mass movement. But suppose there was a way to treat the leg and then thinking you're training 500 pounds when you're only using 200. Right. If you use 200 instead of five, you're going to save your knee to your, your back. Right. So that particular system, in order to get the leg to think that it's doing five on it, you have to use what is called a pre-exhaust system. Leg extension first, not squats. Then leg, leg presses, which preps you for squats. Then squats as the third movement instead of the first. Right. So a lot of guys with these back injuries, they use squat as the first movement. Right. I've never did that. Okay. I learned from the older school of champions to use the pre-exhaust. Right. That is a training principle. Right, right. It kept them alive, kept them healthy, and here I am today. And it, it amplified the results of, of, exactly. of the squat. When you did the yeah, the fool's the leg into thinking you're doing 500 pounds, you're not doing but two. Yeah, yeah. The leg don't know that it's 200 pounds. Right. It says, man, this feels like 500 pounds. Right. And it responds by feel right. and stimuli, right. Right. not by 8 million pounds. Right, right. Yeah. So you mentioned I'm the, smart now. <laughs> <you know, laughs> I'm smart, man. Well, you know, it's a funny thing. I always, I always tell a story. Uh, you know, I, I told the story uh, yesterday in the seminar. I said, you know, the first time I met Lee Haney, was at that gym, Better Bodies in Manhattan, yes. remember? And that Brian Moss, he was an innovator at yes. that time. He went down these stairs, you know, they had a nice bright foyer with the, with the front desk, but then you went down these New York City stairs, the you know, into, yeah. into, the, into the basement of this building. <laughs> it was all black. Yeah. There was Victorian furniture, the equipment, it was like uh, chrome equipment and whatnot. Yeah. You were sitting behind velvet ropes. I was shaking, <laughs> and, and you couldn't have been nicer to me. And uh, we did our first scene together. They, they threw us in there. They said, okay, do, uh, do biceps and triceps. Well, is that the script? They go, yeah. So I said, what should we say? They go, say whatever you want. <laughs> so, Real so, stuff, so, man. You know, you know, you're doing your tricep push down. You know, that now, the Dr. B, this feels so good, man. I get a nice squeeze to the muscle. I said, Lee, isn't it true that at this angulation, we are not only getting the lateral head of the tricep, but the long head as well? You go, exactly, Dr. B. <laughs> he, comes, he comes to me afterwards, after the, after the set, he goes, you work with me every yeah, day, man. man. We're going to make a good team. You know? Understanding the science, man. Yeah, and that's yeah. what we did. We, yeah, yeah. We, were, we had a... I think that shit was number one, wouldn't it be? It's definitely. A, every one. every muscle head in America watched yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And this was the ESP in those days. When yeah. you had cable, you had HBO... Right. CNN and ESPN. That's that was right. it. Yeah, I, I, I had I had I had people in you know, Australia just say, hey, I saw you on TV yeah. or uh, a, a, a Japanese sushi chef is looks. I see you in Japan on TV. Yeah. You know? uh, from all over the all over the world. In fact, I had patients because I was never like a bragger, you know. And I had patients who they went on vacation and on the cruise ship. They they could see ESPN. They come back. Oh, you didn't tell me you were on TV. Said, hey, you know, I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of humble. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how much more time do we have left, uh, would you say? Okay. Um, you talked about functional nutrition. Now, when we were joking around, uh, me and Dr. Joe and, uh, and, and and Dr. Todd, we eat steaks and smoking cigars <laughs> last night. You go, I mean, we eat grass juice and, you know, you know, and, <laughs> and green green oils and all yeah, of it. I'm going to live 95 years or 100. <laughs> I get taken out of here early. Yeah. It made but, all of them. But tell us, tell us your first start with your your your, your, your nutritional regimen. What it's like now, and is it much different than when you competing? Like, what would be the, the two levels of maintenance at, at in our sixties compared to uh, top, you know, Mister Olympia eight times? Well, one one thing uh, about you know sixty nutrition, the food uh, quality should always be the same you know you we eat for to grow and to, to uh generate new cell and tissue because the body is always trying to live but at the same time it's trying to die right I mean so you got to give it as much live food in order to you know stay alive it's really right. simple eat dead food you become a dead person right eat live food to keep you alive that's an interesting point so, so that's the deal man so only difference is now is that the quantity of calories uh, isn't the same as it was during the past time. Right, right. You know, right now I may take in 
<laughs> instead of taking in 10, 12 a, a day as I, as I did in the past, I only take in maybe four, four or five eggs, you know. Well, I'm about three. You know, I do, I've never did steak. Every now and then I would do a red. I, I guess last year I had about yeah, this yeah. much steak. You, you stole one of my steaks. <laughs> that steak you know, kind, kind of, kind of. Mess me up. Yeah, you, for for years, my, for years you tell me, oh, I can't eat any steak. If I eat steak, I get all bound up. <laughs> and meanwhile, I'm going to finish it by steak. He goes, hey, Dr. P, can I have a little bit of that steak? <laughs> Just a little, believe me, I love yeah, steak. It's like this much. Yeah, yeah. I love steak, man. But my choice has always been eggs because it digests quicker. Yeah, eggs have always been quicker. a good food for me, too. Yeah, yeah, you know, and then, of course, a lot of plant-based stuff, sweet potatoes, spinach. Uh, you know, lentils, beans, those kinds of things I like, you know, turnip green, mm -hmm. cabbage, squash, anything having to do with vegetables, root food, they have to yeah. keep the system nice and clean. Yeah, the roots, the taking, root. yeah. Rather than the leaves, the roots. That's that, the roots, yeah. yeah, yeah. I do a combination, roots and, I'm from the country, yeah. I do roots and leaves. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, but uh, then, of course, salmon is very good. I use chicken, try to get, do hormone antibiotic free chicken, you know, so, but right now, I generally would take in a meat maybe once every two or three days, you know, right? Uh, because of you know trying to stay trying to stay healthy. Right. I was born with something called polycystic kidney disease. I didn't know that until about twenty some years ago, right? And because I was on the phone with my mentoring program with my board, and Billy Goat's got a loose, so I bored out the Billy Goat. And I found, you know, urine in my, I mean, blood in my urine. It's, okay, what's going on? Go to the doctor, get checked. I said, Lee, you've born with uh, something called polycystic kidney. I said, really? I said, what do I do about it? He said, man, you're doing everything you can about it now. You're eating good. You exercise. You don't take in large quantities of sodium. So you're doing the right thing for your body right. now. So as I've gotten older, you know, I really focus on staying with that. So plant-based is more important for me now than it is taking in a lot of proteins because I don't need the muscle size anymore. Right. You know, during our time when we were competing, I was, I guess I was about 256, 257, 260. Now I'm at 230, 228. Right. And I feel good in this way. Yeah. Sure, they don't like a little scrawny guy. <laughs> So now I got to keep a look deep on to my wife. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she got to take the fuck out of me, Yeah. You know, you said these sideways. You know, you're married 40 years. You know, they'll try to take it. I think I can take it now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, another, another issue with nutrition uh, that I think is overlooked sometimes uh, is beverages. Yeah. You know, what do you drink? You know, we know water. Number one, we know water, right. fresh, right. filtered and I think if you go to drink water, it has to be filtered yeah. in some way. It's in. It's a lot cheaper to have some type of filtering system in your house. We have yeah. we have a very uh, advanced. It's like a big canister. I can't I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. You fill it up, and it's, it's got four fil different filters in there, and the water tastes beautiful. So that. So reverse osmosis. Yeah, it. something like that. I don't yeah, know what it is. Yeah. I got one too. Huge monster in my. You know, like what the, But I just do spring water. Spring water. I love certified spring water. I do Good. that quite a bit. You know, uh, I do a lot of herbal teas, you know, like ginger, turmeric, you know, chamomile. Uh, do you use tea bags? Because uh, my, my associate, he actually grinds his own ginger and yeah. puts it in the tea. Because you, you're getting I'm, the new, new yeah, nutrients, more yeah, nutrients. The ginger, that's right. The ground ginger. I use the root from time to time yeah. and blend it up along with some turmeric, uh, some beets. Some pineapple, which is a nice digestive enzyme, yeah. along with some spinach. So I would juice with that and use spring water and use a little bit of honey, which is a natural antibiotic. Yeah. yeah. So I, I do I, I do things, I think about my nutrition. I just don't eat anything. Right, right. Think about, well, what kind of results is this going to give me, you know, for my body and my health? So that's the way I think, you know. Right, cool man. Yeah, cool. So, uh, congratulations. Well, you don't kill nothing about that, though, do you? Pete? No, I drink scotch. You're going to live 95 years old, man. It's, it's, it's preserving me, you know? <laughs> no, but I, I drink, I, I, I actually I drink nothing that is sweet. Yeah. I don't like yeah. sweet drinks, you know? If, and if I do have a, an orange juice, it's like uh, yeah. half orange juice, half, half, half. Yeah, half. I do that. Cause I, do, I do more. I have an orange maybe twice a day. Right. Get orange, cut it off because calories are a lot better from a 
real orange. Yeah. And yeah. also the, the the skin, the husk, the meat yeah. of the orange is full of fiber. Yeah. So, you know, it keeps the intestinal tract. Yeah, well, that's what we do in our house. We have a big jug. Yeah, there you go. Fresh water in there. And then we, it, 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 it may be oranges. We just throw it in there. And, it, yeah. and they, they're in there for like a week. You know, and they that's get all that stuff, man. Yeah, you get all that, yeah. that, that, that mm -hmm. good stuff. Uh, as far as let's uh, uh, get the whole trilogy here, recovery. How important is recovery? Recovery is everything, you know. It is, is everything. That's what the body produces natural growth hormone from sleep. You know, you can't beat a tired horse. You know, you yeah. gotta, you gotta rest. You gotta give the body rest. You gotta allow the body to relax. That's something I really admire when I see uh, some of your posts. You know, it's, it's, you know, you have your gong there, yeah. calming the body. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. If more people do that, man, they would yeah. be a whole lot healthier. You know, I get out and I. I doodle around in my little organic garden, you know. Right. That I got the grandkids. Yeah, you got that farmer's pick that big yeah. farmer's Oh, yeah, man. The farmer. Yeah. 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 That's what you gotta do. You gotta step away. You gotta you gotta breathe. You gotta exhale. Yeah. You know, that's that's a huge part of health there. So uh those some those are the things that then I, you know, every now and then I ground while I actually take my yeah. socks yeah. and shoes off and I'm on the grass, you know, and yeah. hanging around out there for long time yeah yeah that's what that, that's what i tell people there's a reason why we love the beach that's right because yeah. you're you're rounding yeah. you're getting the electrical charge from the uh, right. from the earth which yeah. is balancing and in fact you're getting uh negative uh ions which uh, neutralize the free radicals yeah, it's yeah. like it's like taking vitamin c by putting yeah. your feet on the ground yeah. so when you're on the beach you're grounding you are in the sun, you know, we're be, being told that, oh, the sun's bad for you when we, that, that's where we come from, the sun. Where we come from. And, you know, yeah, you don't want to get burnt. That's, right. you don't want to damage your skin and put the sun. But that vitamin D, 20 minutes in the sun, you, you head yeah. in your, your arms, you get more vitamin D than you could ever get in a bottle of, uh, mm -hmm. a bottle of vitamins. Yeah. And then third thing is the, uh, the, the salts in the ocean. Right. Though these salts, that's why Epsom salt baths are so good for you, that these salts just uh, uh, absorb right through your skin and help with the electrolytes of your body. Yeah, so you feel that's why you feel everybody loves to go to the beach, yeah, man. Yeah. You know? So so listen, I, I think we, we we got about an hour in. Okay. <laughs> you you got any questions for me? <laughs> we'll be uh, you know everything. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Remember, I'm starting my career. With you, I'm starting my second career as a, as a <laughs> Cairo slash comedian, right? Yeah. No, Cairo slash. Uh, I got a band now. Yeah. <laughs> with my yeah, gong. That's right. I'm the gong leader. There you go. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Man. Well, listen. Uh, uh, I've got yeah, some questions. Yeah, let's. Say we got some questions from the audience. Yeah, go ahead. I've got a question, and I think it's important, especially in today's world. How do you legally define success? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an excellent question. How do you define it's a success in case you didn't hear about success? The time? Yeah, so, a lot of people got it screwed up, you know. They define success sometimes as how much money you got in the bank, uh, how many trophies you can acquire, all of those things, you know. But, you know, I'm 64 now, you know. And I look at the fact when I look over my life, I had somebody uh, do an article the other day, newspaper said, well, Liam, is there anything you would have did differently? And as I look back over time, nope, there's nothing I would have done different because the life that I have today, it was, it was, I, I strongly feel it was God's plan. You know, if I made mistakes is I, I didn't do things perfectly, but I learned from those. And because of those mistakes, it made me a better person, making better decisions. Mm -hmm. You know, I married my second grade sweetheart, you know, uh, been married now for over 40 years. Wow. I got beautiful grandchildren and just uh, to oh, have beautiful children and, and beautiful children. I yeah. skip right over the Right here, man. Yeah. Olympia, 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 yes. I don't know about you. Yeah, exactly. I respect that. Yeah. But, you know, man, I look at all of that over the years as to where I've been. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad I was there to be a father, there to be a husband. I really feel that God has set a mission for every man. So being a man on a mission means family, you know. And at the end of the day, you can take a seat back and say, wow, oh, I'm glad I was there. And I said, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to hear your voice and 
because of hearing his voice, I can hear their voice. You know, when I say hear their voice, I just don't, not just the noisy part of moving around, but I hear the voice of their spirits, you know, and it, and it calms me when I hear my wife breathe when she's sleeping. It gives me a sense of peace. My grandkids, they're running around and they're just watching all the activity going on. That gives me a sense of peace. And all of those things that, that make so real joy. See, that's the deal. Some people miss joy. You know, that's what I count as success. When you have eyes to see, spiritual eyes, ears that hear, spiritual ears, you know, in a heart that receives the truth, spiritual heart. All of those things that God placed inside of us that connects us to the present and to reflect upon the past and to look forward to the future. That's success, not money in the bank. Because my heavenly father on the calendar thousand hill, I'll always have money. I'll never go broke. Because money is not, and yet money is not the thing to make you happy. You can do a lot of great things with it. So he gave me that along with the other things that he blessed me with. It's beautiful, man. Yeah. So it's like the Godfather says, you spend time with your family? Nah, it's it's right yes, now. Godfather. Because a man who doesn't spend, doesn't spend time with his family is no man to me. It's no man. You yeah. know, yeah. when you look at it, you know, scripture wise, when God created man, created woman, he said, he told man, it's not good for you to be alone. I will make you a help meet. That meant that wife, a companion to help you fulfill the calling that you have in your life. Mm -hmm. And when you get married, and they say, you know, baby comes. Then there's another set of, of responsibilities mm -hmm. that keep you grounded and focused. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, okay, you got, a, got other responsibilities. So I think the good Lord said, okay, since I'm responsible for you, I'm going to make you responsible for somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. there you go. It's passed yeah. down like it's that. Passed down, yeah. And nothing more fulfilling yeah. than I feel yeah. than that of family. Yeah. That's the first institution that he established in the earth and the most powerful institution. Yeah. And this was this this uh, what you just said is the most powerful point yeah. of this whole yeah. walk right hey, now. You know, you know, Pete, we yeah. always talk about that. Yeah. We talk about our family. Yeah. We laugh, yeah. we talk, we uh, like I I said I was up till two o'clock in the morning with uh, Dr. Joe. We're looking at we would sit next to each other. Hey, look, remember when you, you guys visited us? And here's my son, your daughter, blah blah blah. You know, and and uh, it's what it's what the, the juice of life. It's, That's the it's juice of life. life. That's the badge of honor. Right and this there. was like the highlight of our whole talk. Yeah, yeah. Screw the screw <laughs> screw the nutrition exercise. <laughs> we just gave you guys the solution to life. Yeah. These you you concentrate on your family. <laughs> So uh, in any event, I want to uh, uh, thank you uh, for inviting us down here. We had a tremendous seminar. We got plenty. We got it all on film. We're going to be coming in and, and watching the Lee Haney games. You got yeah. To, uh, hundreds of competitors. Yeah. The, the, the place is hopping. Yeah. You've always been, I think this is, this is one of the largest shows in, in the South, in yeah. the Southeast. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. And you've been doing this for what? About uh, this eight is years? the ninth year. This is the ninth year. Ninth year. And we've been with you almost, sure not everyone, but we've been down yeah. here quite a time adjusting the athletes and having And fun. I really appreciate it. I don't take nothing for granted. And you brought some yeah, of your I'm other honest. friends too. We got the all court 360. We got the right. pro adjuster yeah. guys over here. Yeah. It's like a chiropractic uh, a bazaar. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, got we, my yeah. man, uh, Glenn, I got your back. <laughs> we'll be, hey, oh, yeah, Glenn, 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 I got your back. Gotcha. We got you back. We got you. We got Not you just back. me. Yeah. We got it. Yeah. I like that. So Dr. Chris, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Dr. Chris there. Yep. So they can snap the shoulder back in place, you know. Keep, Good. Me, keep me training. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want to thank you, brother. I love you. And I think everybody, let's uh stand for a second. You can sit down, birthday boy. Ready? <laughs> All right, let's get a little uh little mood lighting. Oh, oh there we go. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lee. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, don't forget Zale, Lee Haney, Zale, okay? <laughs> All right, thanks, thank brother. you, thank you. This thing will go down in history. Yeah. You know, that children, my children, my grandchildren, watch this interview yes. and learn a lot about it. Thank you, Brian. Yes. Uh,
Okay. Well, if anything, Dr. Sajid, can you cheat the camera a little bit more? So just if I'd be cheeky in the camera? If you cheat the camera a little more. Oh, okay. Yeah. How's that? There you go. How about me? How does that look? Does that look better? No comment. Can you see it? <laughs> Pam? <laughs> we got a pack. We got a peck pop app. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can do it with this one too. But Come on, you can't now. see it on the camera. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we are. Ah, 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 oh, are you recording? So this will be in the official. Oh, I think. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you're recording now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna, that, I'm gonna hit go, and then you guys are, you guys are good for whenever you're ready. Hello, oh, hello, folks. This is Dr. Peter Talley. This is uh, another hour of CEs from the International Chiropractics Association. We're, we're live in Atlanta, Georgia at the Lee Haney Games. And for this segment, we're in a studio because we're gonna have a discussion. And what's the discussion? You figured it out before. How many uh, hours do we have? Uh, years. years. Yeah, we have over 90 years of knowledge combined here. 90 years of experience. Yeah, 90 right. years of experience right here. So this is Dr. Todd McDougall, and that's with an L-E, not an A-L at the end. <laughs> and my buddy, Dr. Joe Manitegi. Dr. Todd's from, uh, uh, where are you exactly? In, in the, north of Indiana. North, north yeah, of Indiana. Indiana. Mm -hmm. yep. And Dr. Joe Manitegi from Hallandale Beach, Florida, the Floridian. And I'm with Dr. Peter Talley from Teaneck, New Jersey. I represent the Northern Italian branch of the chiropractic profession. <laughs> the South Florida uh, Italian mob and the... Uh, and, and Scotland. The Scotland. 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 <laughs> and what we're going to do today is uh, uh, what every... If you guys are out there are and gals are real chiropractors and you go to a seminar to learn something... What happens? You go out to dinner afterwards, go out for a drink. You start to talk about chiropractic because you're still, after all these 93 years, we're still excited about being chiropractors. And in fact, last night we were sitting around the fire pit after dinner, smoking some cigars, and it came up with chiropractic stories and chiropractic information. So we, with, with this hour of CE, we wanna talk about techniques. We wanna talk about the science. We wanna talk about the philosophy. We want to talk about the art of chiropractic with the bend towards athletics, because as you know, Dr. Dr. Todd is the strong man, doc. He literally has just the literally strongest people in the world, both male and female, not the, not, not the amateur strong people in the world. He's done them he, too. He, he's yeah. done them too, yeah. but the strongest people in the world. Dr. Joe down in South Florida sees a ton of athletes, boxers and gymnasts, uh, uh, because in South Florida, there's a lot of action. And you, and you were also involved in the Police Athletic League for many years when you were, you were, you were president, you, president of eight years. You're president of the Police Athletic League. That's, that's eight years, plus coached for 15. So yeah. I coached in, you know, numerous sports, baseball, soccer, et cetera, and was the head of the coaches, helped them to moderate parents and kids that everybody can have a good time as yeah. well as learn some skills. And because we're in South Florida, that's where a lot of pro play baseball players do retire to. So of course they end up sitting in the bleachers watching their kids. So I make them honorary coaches after they pass their you know, background checks because everyone's got to get one. And uh, then they get to get on the field, you know, with, and help play. Like, T ballers learn how to catch a ball yeah. from a pro. Yeah. What a gift, right? Yeah, that is something, man. I, very, very I never knew you, it was that extensive. Your yeah. involvement with that. Oh yeah, yeah. very, very wow. Fun. Wow. Yeah, fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yes. And you know, me, my my career has has always been uh, 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 instructing exercise. You know, I received from Arnold the uh, pioneer of uh, fitness uh, education award mm -hmm. that Arnold handed me. One of the most proudest moments of my life that uh, I was recognized as a pioneer in fitness. Uh, you know, our body shaping show, or actually the R. Lee Haney show, was one of the first exercise shows on, on TV, on ESPN. So uh, we pioneered that. We loved helping people from the TV uh, from the TV tube. And in those days, we had there was no Instagram. 
There was no YouTube. So uh, we got millions and millions of people. In fact, there's a lot of chiropractors. They say, well, wow, so when I was going to chiropractic school, you inspired me, a chiropractor on an exercise show. And that's uh, we watched you every day. I used to watch you and Lee yeah, yeah, and yeah. body shaping as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 before I was a chiropractor. Yeah, so we, we, yeah. we, 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 we all, all three of us are blessed. And that not only are we great chiropractors and we love chiropractic, and we say that like, like Lee would say, nothing wrong with a healthy ego. You know, we are great chiropractors, you know, with the, with the people that we serve through, through, we tried, through okay. 93 years, 93 years of serving between us. And we still love it. That's why we're still at a seminar here, environment here. And uh, so we figured we, we, we shoot some stuff, shoot the breeze. Uh, I'll, I'll hand it to you first, Todd, with a, a question. And then we'll go back and forth between you two guys. But you're very special in the strong man, uh, strong woman community because of a very special technique that you do for the low back and hip area, mm -hmm. which is different than what the, the, the usual chiropractor does, okay. which is a lumbar roll, a side roll transition. And, which is very effective. Right, which is very effective. But explain to us why that is not, because you adjust these strong men mm -hmm. seconds before they, they get a world record. Right. So what is it about the strong person that it, that requires you to do a specific adjustment? I know you've explained this to me a few times. Sure. But ex please explain it to our audience what makes that special. No, I think I think it's interesting. Um, years ago, Chad Coy, who was a pro strong man himself, he actually that come up to me and said, hey, hey listen, you know what? I, I really enjoy getting chiropractic care. I enjoy chiro the chiropractic adjustments. But he said, you know, after I get adjusted, I, I really I lose all my power. I feel sprung. And, and just like that, just sprung. He says, now, listen, I know you just got out of school because I graduated in 97 behind you guys, right? But uh, at any rate, with that being the case, um, I had to really kind of look at the history. What was going on within the sports industry, what the changes were and why, okay? And so I started taking a look at, okay, what, what does an athlete want? An athlete wants to maximize their performance. They want to maximize the neuromuscular components. In other words, they want to recruit as many muscle fibers as possible to execute power and strength and do it in such a way that they are not going to feel sprung, okay? So if you go and you take a look at what happened in the mid-90s, we got away from this thing called ballistic and static stretches. Static stretches are basically the toe touches that you have, right? And we used to do that in school. That was part of our warm, quote unquote, warm up for PE, for example. And then, of course, you know, track and, and field and swimming and all those other kinds of things. But the static stretch is basically, you know, like a toe touch that you do over a period of time. And then the static or the ballistic stretch was the bounce that came with that. Well, if you go all the way back to 1910, what had been discovered by a fellow by the name of Dr. Hoffman was, is that if you go ahead and you do a static stretch, that there will change the number of muscle fibers recruited. If you do a ballistic stretch, it pretty much changes it even more for the worse. So you have less and less and less. In fact, there are some studies, research studies out there that actually show that on the same side that you stretch, say for example, is the right leg, if you stretch or bounce a particular segment, it pretty much blows the whole circuitry on that one side. It's actually very fascinating. Mm -hmm. But the reason why, um, that, that's the reason why we actually got into the dynamic warmups and the dynamic warmups are basically movement patterns that you do while you're going to prepare for the event that you're going to do those same kinds of pattern moves, right? Mm -hmm. So that that in itself was very important to to you know kind of look back at the history of that aspect that has changed. So if we go ahead and take a look and see what most of our colleagues, which I think there's a study out there also that says that 90% of the chiropractic doctors and other people who are body workers and, and PTs and athletic trainers and everybody else who wants to play chiropractor, unfortunately, that, that is a, a thing. Um, they go and gravitate towards that side posture application, all righty? Which again, you know, like just mentioned, it is, it is actually very, very effective. However, in strength sports, it, if you go ahead and you take a look at a lumbar roll, and you have that patient where they lay on their side, they roll their leg over, you're actually causing several areas and muscle uh, components, as well as joint complexes and ligamentous components that are all in a stretch phase, right? So we as chiropractors, we go ahead and put people in that position, bring it to tension, which is a stretch, 
and then we bounce it to go ahead and try and open up joint complexes that we're trying to move, right? Well, that explosiveness actually goes and blows the neuro recruitment components. And they call that Hoffman's reflex, named after the doctor who discovered it in 1910. Right. So the reason why I have gone from a long lever uh, type adjustment to a short lever high velocity burst application is because what I found is it has the most neurological pop to it with the least amount of negative neuro recruitment components as well. So, so and you, I, you say that, so that with the lumbar roll, we're shut. We're, we're, we're disrupting that neuro, that that fate, that part of the neurological the threshold, the neurological, and threshold. that's okay for a patient because they're going to go rest after that, or most of the time, it, sure, take it easy after that, and then that can be reestablished. Yeah, where a, a, a strong person athlete, uh, is, if you're going to adjust them right before they yeah. they do it, yeah, it's, it's going to it's going to. Well, what we found, they is, don't have it doesn't give them enough time to process the adjustment. Yeah, well, what we found is is that with that that side posture adjustment. Most strength athletes will have to wait anywhere from 24 to 72 hours before they can actually engage in a strength mm -hmm. event. And there are people that think that, you know, you could go ahead and do what's called a muscle type activation or reactivation technique, but that's kind of like putting the toothpaste back in the tube. Right. It, it really isn't going to happen. I mean, right. you pretty much already shot it. It's done. So, you know, doing that was for the benefit of the athletes, obviously. And, you know, with that over time, I've become very well known for that aspect. Unfortunately, I'm the only person talking about it. Right. And, uh, and I think too, you know, chiropractic should be sport specific, you know, massage is sport specific, certain physical therapy applications are sport specific, certain exercise protocols are sport specific, but in chiropractic, we get hammered all the way to the collegiate level that every technique is the same and it's not. I'm sorry, that may make people upset, but I'm not here to sugarcoat it. I'm here to go ahead and say, hey, listen, you know what? Let's see what we can do to make chiropractic better. And part of that is, is identifying things like that. And, you know, I'm not taking away from what we're doing. I mean, you know, I always say, you know, listen, what I do is not your soccer mom chiropractor. And automatically some people will get offended because they think I'm knocking a soccer mom chiropractor. There's a lot more soccer moms out there that need the care. So it's not like we're we're hammering anybody. We're not dissing anybody. It's just a different kind of chiropractic, but it's still chiropractic. Mm -hmm. And chiropractic always works. It's the chiropractor that has to operate it. Mm -hmm. yeah, or some patients don't work. So. <laughs> no, sometimes that's true. That's true too. That's true too. All right. Thank you for that explanation. No, I, I hope, really hope that makes sense. That. Okay, Dr. Joe, I, I want to ask you, uh, and I want I want to stick with that uh, with the police athletic league uh, concept. And can you describe uh, in your in your practice? You know, yes, you were an administrator, president of the PPAL. You were a coach. You trained coaches. Tell me about the chiropractic care of the kids and what systems you had in place and what maybe what testing you would do for the kids that you would very really uh, came to see you from these different uh, uh, teams? Well, first of all, I started this uh, organization, the Police Athletic League of Hollandale Beach with the current police chief of that time who has passed away. And I would like to give a shout out to Tom McGill and his whole family. They were just monumental in our community. And uh, I've known him since I was a little kid when he was a sergeant and watched him you know, go through the ranks. And he was a patient of my father's as well. And, um, you know, when I came out of chiropractic school, I had joined the Kiwanis Club of Hollandale, like BJ was a Kiwanian too. And I felt like I had, you know, my dad said to me, he goes, uh, another chiropractor, Dr. Preacher from Hollywood, old timer, came to my office and said, I heard your son's out of school. He's got to learn how to be, become a pillar in the community, and that means giving back. So he's, we need him in the Kiwanis Club. And I looked at them both, and I said, listen, community service without a court order, I could lose my Italian heritage. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know what I mean? And so they both laughed, and then they said, you're going to do it. I said, all right. You know. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm always looking to my elders for guidance, and I'm always saying, let's trust in the way that I don't need to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, Pete's they, older than both of us too. Yeah. And, and I listen to him all the time. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, he gets and, loud. And, yeah. and plus he's big. So, <laughs> you know, you don't want to mess with him. So anyways, uh, you know, for me, I always think about like, you know, what what is the other aspects? You know, because we talk about 
what we're doing with the professional athletes, but what is that doing also to build our practice, right? So that the given back has a backwash of building your practice. Yeah. Like who thought? I didn't know that that was going to happen. And then once you see these kids' faces when you're delivering all these free turkeys during Thanksgiving and they're not having one if you don't bring it, I mean, that's that's an amazing feeling. And the family's crying, thank you so much. And like that giving back is like so amazing, right? And that's why you see so many people doing, uh, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger with his uh, after-school all-stars. Lee Haney has his ranch. There's always uh, uh, somebody with a giant heart who's going to give back to the kids in need. And I think like as chiropractors, uh, we have the opportunity to do that. And anybody who's not doing that, you're, you're robbing yourself of some of the best memories you'll ever have. And, you know, these kids, um, because I really got that feeling for them, I ended up doing all the physicals for all the kids in the, in, in, uh, for free. Mm. I wouldn't take any money because I wanted them to be on the field, playing baseball, stealing bases, not stealing cars, mm. right? Because they're either with us getting some guidance, you know, on life stuff as well as health that, and as well as community, as teamwork, the, all these aspects that we're bringing to the, 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 the table is so huge. And like while we're working with professional athletes and we're working with the kids and you ask that question, how do it, how, what kind of chiropractic, how's that funneling his way into their hearts and into their lives? So as you know, kids love to call you by all your titles at the same time. So I'm, co I'm coach Dr. Joe, <laughs> coach Dr. Joe. And so that's the way they think. That's great. And so, you know, uh, who got their ankle twisted on the field? Who got cleated? Who got this? Who got that? That's what you're there for. You're there to say to the page, listen, I need, I have a piece of paper in my bag and I need the parent to be there. I need you to sign this. And it's okay to work on your kid. And I'm going to take the joint through the range of motion. I'm going to see where it got locked up. I'm going to see if it's something for me. Make sure it's not a, a break, right? You got to have tuning fork. I don't know if you know that as well. You have a tuning fork with you. And when you hit a tuning fork on a bone, if it's broken in any shape or form, it's going to stink. But we're, it won't if it's not busted. And so these little field tests that we have to know how to do as doctors is something that gives us as chiropractors uh, a, a feeling of credit to the people that you're, you're working with. And they, they, how do you have a clipboard in your bag? with a piece of paper that I need yeah. to sign because I know one of the kids are going to get hurt and I'm going to be there for you. Yeah. And so here's my card. Here's down the street where I am. If you guys need anything else, please come take a look. I have an x-ray machine on premise. Whatever you need, we can take care of. So if you need to go further, we'll give you a referral out to somebody else. And so these are the ways that you get that trust from your community, right? Awesome. And so... I appreciate you asking about the police athletically because as you know, with all the professional boxers, kickboxers, power lifters, and because of Dr. Todd recommended World's Strongest Men in my area to me, I get to be while these guys are setting world records and be at their side. Well, it's it's that that being able to do that, to mm -hmm. you know, send somebody that I care about to you is one of the biggest. Um, components of trust within the profession and I think that's something that you know we're kind of missing right now within the chiropractic profession don't you think and a lot of us we're a little concerned about you know what exactly that they're going to get right mm -hmm. so in your office you probably have some standardized protocols right Dr. Pete yes I do uh, my 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 gig is a little different than you guys uh, I don't use a drop table in my office uh, I use a flat bench uh, because I was taught the techniques of uh, Major Bertrand Dijonet, the founder of SOT, and uh, a giant in the field. Giant. I, uh, I described in my talk, uh, my, my other CE talk, how uh, I met him when he was 93 years old, uh, studied uh, Category 1 with him uh, for a few hours in Omaha, Nebraska, mm -hmm. back in the uh, mid-80s, and and uh, I was hooked by that technique. And it's a, a technique, cranial sacral technique, that takes into account the attachments of your dura mater. 
The dura mater attaches firmly inside the skull, particularly the sagittal suture, the tentorial membrane in the back. So we examine these areas and by stimulating this, these areas of the scalp, we know that the scalp is contiguous with the dura mater. And it's still, even in, in, in elderly people, it goes through those cracks, so it goes through the sutures and becomes continu continuous with the dura mater. We see it in the baby. You, you see the scalp is attached to the brain. So that, that relationship remains throughout life. So put applying pressure to those areas, we can in, in, improve the cerebral spinal fluid flow. We can uh, uh, relax the whole body. I mean, I don't know how, I know how many times I'm working on the skull and the patient says, Oh, that feels so good on my low back. And I'm working on this skull because that, that relationship between the skull and the sacrum is like a guitar. I made a video once how your spine is like a guitar. And I so I was playing a guitar, like I think, 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 this guitar is out of tune. You know, so I tune the guitar, and that's what cranial sacrum is. It's tuning the tension in the spinal cord. And most people who come in, particularly overtrained athletes, they are in a state of what I call stress mode, where when you are stressed, you hear, you hear a, a loud noise, boom, what do you do? You go like that. You, you, you would say you're ducking, but you're really not ducking. Your spinal cord is contracting to get you ready for fight or flight. Now that happens, that's, and that's normal. That's what saves you from being eaten by the tiger. But once the, time, the threat is gone, the system should reboot itself naturally. But we're in such a stressful state now in our in our in our society. In a lot the world of dopamine that, hits, right? Boom, 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 and it gets stuck like that. So when I when you're doing cranial sacral, the person you you they're not even breathing on a table, and as you're holding the different contact, they go. You see the spine start to wave like a flag as they breathe. Do you know, and, I, I had a really cool experience similar to that, where I had a patient that had a knot here and a knot here in the sacrum. Yeah. And I put my, I remember putting my thumb on one and putting at the base of the occiput, and I could feel a hum. Um, yeah. Well, they talk about the uh, 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 Pasquale Sarasola the other day. He said, Wong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, I mean, and it, it was a real thing. Yeah. And it, that was bizarre. So that just kind of, well, you know, goes into what you're talking about, about right? With the vibration, you know, everything is vibration. You know? right. They say the universe, little strings vibrating. You know? mm -hmm. you know, everything vibrates. And this this vibrates uh, more than, than the air around us. That's why one is hard and one is is light. Uh, but the, uh, the thing about cranial sacral for athletes is that, you know, rather than use a, a massager or a roller or something, I could get them to instantly relax so that when I do for my my bossy adjustments, they go so much more easier. Right. And uh, and that's an important thing because particularly overtrained athletes, you know, competitive, you know, I get a lot of competitive uh, tennis players. Uh, pickleball has been a boon to the chiropractic profession. <laughs> man. I, I, you get these old, the old folks like us, you <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, but but an interesting note. Uh, I just read a recent study. They found what what sports you play and what you that relate to your longevity. And they found people who play tennis mm -hmm. live longer than any other sport that people play. Mm -hmm. And I have ninety year old tennis players in my office. They play tennis. They play golfers. You know it's. Uh, and it's amazing that they could still play it all these years. Do you play tennis? No, I don't. Do you, do you play tennis? Yeah. I, I don't play tennis. You and me, we're gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no uh, pickleball for me. But I look like a gorilla this time. It's, it's <laughs> in, the, in the woods. Like more than stop and get pretty ball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I enjoy the game, Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> that is hilarious. That is hilarious. So, uh, uh, Todd, uh, tell me about the, uh, the the strength associations that you work with, and what is the uh, uh, like? What's the goal, of strong man? I, I know I lift things up, I put them down, but uh, yeah, it's it's all about power and movement, and uh, you know, these days actually making money. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But uh, when I started, there weren't that many strong man organizations. We had IFSA that was based in Canada. Uh, we had the um, what was it? Uh, North American Strongman Society, uh, and now I mean we've got we've got dozens worldwide. Um, presently, I, I work with Lynn Morehouse, uh, Darren Sadler, and Colin Bryce, 
who all those guys are all tied up world strongest man. So I'm working with a company called official strongman games based in North Carolina these days. Um, uh, I was just over in London here recently because official strongman games had reached over into great Britain and they just recently expanded into Africa as well. So uh, it's very exciting time to, to do that. And listen, there's just so many organizations that are there right now. Um, and they're all trying to, you know, offer their own specific, you know, um, goodies, if you will. And, um, uh, I just decided to, to, you know, hitch my wagon to, to that organization. I work also with United States Strongman quite a bit as well, with Willie Wessels and his crew. Um, but uh, no, I mean, as a whole, the, the strength sports, uh, I think, are a great outlet for a, a very stressful time in our society. And, um, you know, men and women both, I, I think, have, have seen... Um, a, a sense of power being taken away from them. And uh, this is definitely an opportunity where they can be it's able certain. to engage every part of their being yeah. from the foot and, 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 you know, and get that power from the floor and, and engage everything yeah. and every muscle that of the body, you, every you know? muscle of the body yeah. has to be uh, engaged, hardened, right. Yeah. You know, just like a rock. And, yeah. and it's, it's been great to see it. And, I want to tell you what, strong men, strong women athletes, they're special crew. Um, I, I sometimes uh, forget that I've been working with them 25 years and kind of adopted some of their um, less than cordial applications and speech. You mean they get cranky like you? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, but, you know, it makes it really, really good because now I sound like I'm from Jersey like you. <laughs> but, no, it's, it's, it's a great sport. I love it. I've been, you know, working with it for a long time. I've been able to, you know, take care of over half the World's Strongest Man titles. Um, a lot of the female athletes as well in those titles. Let me ask you a question. Who decides the different events? Is there a standard a standardization? Yeah, a lot, of times, a lot of times there is, especially when you go ahead and you see uh, World's Strongest Man. They'll throw almost always the stones of the last event. Yeah, and almost the every stones, the they, stones. We yeah. have to lift up like five or six stones in a row. Yeah, and they exactly. get heavier as you go along. Exactly. Just exactly. in case people don't sometimes they'll do they stone over bar as well. You yeah. know those kinds yeah. of things. But you know you'll see different events like Dingle's fingers. You'll see uh, events such Fingles, as Fingles Fingers. Fingles Fingers. Uh, yeah, we're basically. I don't know. I don't, this this it's a per, yeah, right? Yeah, right. I know, right? No, when you see it, it's it's like a giant chimney pipe that weighs an excessive amount of weight that they'll go ahead and they'll pick up the base and then they'll walk it up because right. it's got a pivot point in the right. center. And they'll go ahead yeah, and they'll do that with yeah. progressive weights. Yeah, I, I've seen that. Yeah, right? I've seen that. Yeah. So they'll do that or Conan's wheel where basically you're you're holding the, the, the weight right here, which you're going in a circle. And so, you know, depending on which direction you go. But I've seen people turn gray because, I mean, basically their, their cardiac system basically you know, shut down. And uh, order services. Anything, that, you yeah, you can you can tear biceps. You can. No, I'm saying not attached to anything. They just. Oh, follow oh no, you just pick pair. it up, cradle it, and it's attached to a central component. Oh, yeah. okay, so it's yeah. attached. So yeah. you walk it around the yeah. cone and the wheel. Yeah, yeah the cone and the wheel. Yeah. yeah. So I tell you, Rogue did a great thing, and they have the wheel of pain that uh, <laughs> Slater and Rogue put together, and that is an amazing apparatus. It filled this room. It's so big. Really? It's all made of wood. Yeah, it's an amazing device. Um, uh, they do that at the uh, the Arnold uh, Arnold Strongman Classic, you know, every year. I'm not sure if they actually brought it to. I don't think they did bring it up to uh, the Rogue Invitational. When they were uh, they doing their the wheels, did you find like certain civilizations were coming into play uniformly around those athletes doing? You know, I think it was, I think it's an interesting question because a, a lot of times in strength sports, you'll go ahead and see a lot of the same kinds of things over right. and over again, which kind of makes it interesting. However, what I also know, and you guys do too, you've been at this a long time, longer than I have. Um, you go ahead and you find people are a wide variety of uh, accumulated compensation patterns. So, you know, they'll go ahead and strongman, especially you'll go ahead and do a wide swath of different kinds of training applications. And so the compensations are really weird and unique. So you really have to break it apart. And every person, regardless of the event structure or the event, you know, like the, the structure, like the, uh, the uh, Wheel of Pain, for example, um, they still may come with different things that are wrong. And uh, I mean, I've had patients, you know, or athletes come to the uh, the events with literally broken backs, uh, multiple blown discs, um, uh, torn quads, torn adductors, torn pecs, you know, uh, a wide variety of different things. But, you know, there are things that do pop up, say, for example, if uh, you're doing a deadlift or you're doing a log press, you know, that that from the floor movement, bringing it up to the hips, 
a lot of people will go ahead when they get a little stressed, they, they, they whip that head. When they whip that head, that's going to jack with their jaw. That can also jack with their suboccipital range. That can give them headaches. That can give them syncope or, you know, lightheadedness. Uh, that can change breathing patterns. Um, we even had one of the athletes, for example, that uh, he had fallen when he was doing sandbag carry and uh, hit his head. And uh, so I had to reset his occiput. Well, they were a little bit worried about him because his blood sugar had gone up so high. And they're like, okay, let's, you know, your blood sugar is really high. So we want to go ahead and retest it. Well, I was in the process of adjusting him when they decided to retest. And I went ahead and I set that jaw just as they were doing the blood draw. They went back over and the reading on the blood sugar dropped 80 points. And they're like, what just happened? What did you do? I said, I just finished up and set his jaw. Mm -hmm. So there's so many things that are like that, that boy, wouldn't it be neat to have a study on that? You know, see how often that happens. Was that just a fluke? Mm -hmm. Or is that something that can happen on every patient? Mm -hmm. But see, it's almost like nobody's interested in that stuff, you know, when it comes to studies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And it costs a fortune to, to do a study, yeah. right? But, you know, there's, in no, there's no return on investment. Well, the, other than the chiropractors having more ammunition in their own personal practices, you know, it's not like they're studying a drug and they're going to make a five billion well, dollars. So that, drug. That, that, don't you think, Doctor Pete? That's kind of one of the problems that we have. I mean, the insurance companies will go ahead and they'll pay X amount of dollars, and then they'll go ahead and they'll they'll, they'll screw us out of maybe you know five cents or five dollars or two dollars or whatever the case is, and you get your your uh, explanation of benefits back and the report of how much money that you got, you know, as far as your clinic got, and you realize that they, they've shorted you, you know, maybe $100 on that check. Mm -hmm. Well, what they do is, and, and the adjustment's always one of the things that they short you on, right? Mm -hmm. So what they end up doing is, is that the, the you go ahead and call them and, and say, hey, listen, you shorted me on the check. And then they'll go ahead and say, hey, you know, um, if, if you just go ahead and send that check back, we'll go ahead and reissue a new one with the corrected amount. Well, that gives them another 30 days and I'm paying you. Right. In the meantime, if you go ahead and say, hey, you know, I got to take this um, because I got lights to pay. I got bills to pay. I got people in there. I got a babysitter. I got a dog needs to eat. You know, all those kinds of things that we have in life because we're people, too, just because we own businesses or our doctors doesn't mean we're not. But so we'll go ahead and we'll say, all right, let's see, I'm going to sign that. When you sign that check, you accept that payment in full from that insurance company. Well, what's happened over time since, you know, from where you're at to, to where the, the youngsters coming up are, they keep dropping that fee. You know why? Because what they're saying is, is the actuators are looking at it and say, hey, you know what? The chiropractors are willing to take less and less and less and less and less. So they whittle that expensive adjustment, which is a surgical strike on the nervous system to create a better quality functioning body, right? Um, and now it's like $26 according to some insurance companies. So we've got the studies. I think the studies are going to be huge for information. But on the other side of it, we need to figure out how to go ahead and battle the insurance companies to go ahead and raise that price per adjustment. Because, listen, I know I, I can share stories in regards to people who've had events who spent, you know, $100,000 uh, and, and with one adjustment, their, their problem is gone, Right which is, is, I mean, there's this, this is what happens when it, you, you do it, an incredible chiropractic adjustment. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? But the, the thing is, is what is the value of that chiropractic adjustment? Every chiropractic adjustment, I think, in my opinion, especially at the wages they are now, should be a $250 adjustment, each one of them. But, but what, would we, what do we have within the industry itself? Everybody thinks, oh, you know what? I'll get a free set of x-rays if I go ahead and pay $45. But hey, you know the winner? I get a massage. Mm. Well, that's not chiropractic. Mm. And at the same time, we chiropractors ourselves have really shot ourselves in the foot before we even get into the race. We need to figure out how to create more value in the chiropractic adjustment. And I think part of that value comes from what it is that we have to share with the people that are up and coming, Right. But it just seems like that's not where the, the the kids are at, so to speak. You know, um, we don't we don't we're not able to get that value in each of those chiropractic adjustments because it's the last thing on the cereal box that they offer their patients today. Mm. And the question is, how do we get that 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 people chiropractors in particular to believe in the adjustment? Mm. That's a good point. Well, you I'm know? not following it because I got to tell you. I know that everybody that I've ever met that had an adjustment for me values it 100%. And I got to say, 
The same thing with Dr. Pete. He has sent me people over the last 25, 30 years down to South Florida, snowbirds, and I've done the same with him. And I always feel confident that I'm sending to people that know how to adjust. And I got to th- say that the Cairo Athletica technique that we're putting together and hopingly uh, we're going to get out there to have Cairo Athletica offices throughout the country that we could say, okay, that person's been trained, that person's been trained. That per- so we're being proactive. Yeah. And, and so I have to say, like, uh, I don't want to feel like I'm in the wake of life. I want to feel like I'm for the, the forefront and the wake of life is behind me. Mm-hmm. Just like you are forging yeah. through life with what you're doing. Oh, well, trust me. Well, what, what I say on a regular basis, and, and, that, that, that is creating a ripple. That's right. And that's what I'm saying. So let's, let's come from that place of, uh, you know, how we reach everybody by we are reaching everybody. Mm-hmm. And I feel we are. And anybody that comes in contact with me that's from any place says, what are you doing? I've never had this done before. Yeah. And I tell them, have your doctor back home, look into Cairo Athletica technique, and let's see if we can't get them mm-hmm. as a referral doctor mm-hmm. on our network of people who are still adjusting my hand. Right. And, you know, that's that's a, that's a thing that, like you said, should be worth $250. Okay, maybe so. But I think like the the important part is is that people are going to have another option for healthcare, that they won't have to have only surgery or drugs. And so when we bring that forward, we're going to be the wake that will dictate price at a later time. Well, I think though it's important to take note of it, especially right. because the, the the average person coming out of chiropractic college it's a three hundred thousand dollar bill. So how many, you know, $20 adjustments is it going to take to pay back a $300,000 chiropractic education bill? Yeah, I mean. And so what, what do we do? I haven't heard right? of a $20 adjustment since, the, you know, yeah. the, the 70s. I mean, I don't know of any $20 adjustments. Well, you're in Miami. I'm in Indiana. So we still, have, we still have people doing anywhere from 20 to 40 some dollars. Oh, my God. An adjustment. Yeah. 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 And, and I'll tell you what. And, and then you get pushback because it's like because we have all of these, you know, bit, um, advertisements and whatnot on Instagram and well, you know what, I'm not going to spend any more than that because it's just, there's no value in it. Well, so yeah. of course, you know, of course you can, you can always say, listen, you can get two hamburgers and get full at McDonald's for five bucks, mm-hmm. or you can go over and get a steak yeah. and, and spend 12 bucks. I just think, and, you know, the whole, so it's, it's good to talk about the challenge. Yeah, but, but we have to have a solution for the challenge, too. And that's what and, we're doing. And Chiro that's Athletica. what we're doing, Cairo Athletica. That's what we're doing by opening this discussion up to better the men of chiropractic community and saying, listen, you don't have to be ashamed. Look at what these guys are doing, and you can do, too. And uh, and we're willing to and, teach. And, 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 right? and, the, and the good news is, again, like, you know, it's it goes beyond that. Pete... Dr. Pete, I know, has a big part in his community, and you do too. And, uh, you know, we have to remember that people look to us from all aspects of life, right? What are you doing with your spiritual self in that community? What are you doing with your chamber of commerce in that community? Uh, Are you bringing something to your town that they've never seen before? And so these kind of things are what makes a chiropractor stand out from other doctors that aren't doing these things as well. Mm -hmm. So who is your family doctor, right? Is it your chiropractor? Because it can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're going to trust you more when they see, you know, what you do. I mean, I got fortunate enough to have the mayor of the town give me a certificate where they made my name, Dr. Joseph Monetei Day in Hollandale Beach on Mm -hmm. January 19th. Right after MLK and the, and the great doctor, you know, Martin Luther King, my mine's right next to him. And so on the calendar of Holland, though, not, not nationally, yeah, yeah. but, you know, or, you know, but it's still a great honor that somebody thought that my works was worth doing that. For. Yeah. And, and do you know that that was in every newspaper and in, in every rag everywhere, right? And so what did that do? Chiropractor Dr. Joseph Lamontegui II was awarded by the mayor a day on the calendar yeah. for his awesome. work in his communities. The word chiropractor was on there, and in my case, it's chiropractic physician, and because, because I'm in Florida, Florida, and I get to you know, 
put all that stuff on there yeah. because it, it it will make them relate to other things, right? Yeah. And I, so I agree with that 100%. And so and once again, we're talking about solution. How are we getting our name out there? How are we bringing value? How are people going to say, I remember that guy's name? Yeah. Where, wasn't he involved with something? Right. And uh, so in that vein, uh, while I was in those different spots, I created a celebrity golf tournament that's a fundraiser. Um, I created like a, a classic car show. I, mean, I would work with Russ Gagliano, who had all the classic car guys. And I said, hey, Russ, you're patient. Come on, let's get in here. I want to bring this and put a 50s doo band out there on a bandstand that we drug out there on a truck. We had a good time, you know, we created uh, this experience for the town. And so these things are above and beyond, like just going to work every well, that's day. Well, that's what dude loves your practice, because, you know, it's always been for me, myself, you know, any gym I've gone to, I've become the gym chiropractor, you know, got to go see Dr. P, you know, all you, all you need is the the, the the best trainer to come in and get an adjustment from you. And they feel, you know, uh, as, as far as the three of us are concerned, I know, and what we are trying to teach with Cairo Athletica, that when you get an adjustment, you know that you've got a quality adjustment. Nobody has, you don't have to, you, it, you, the, the patient could be deaf, dumb, and blind, but they don't, they, and, and, and you don't even have to talk to them, you know, and they get a, a tremendous adjustment because you just, you just feel the energy of the, of the body flowing through your body. Like when you gave me an adjustment before, immediately felt that. And so to me, that energy is value, you know, and, and that's what we're trying to teach, you know, it, isn't it sad that we have to revive the chiropractic adjustment? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it sad at this point that so many kids are graduating from school and they're not learning how to adjust in school. They're learning how to pass tests and boards. And that's what that $300,000 is for. Right. And they come out, they don't know how to give an adjustment. They don't know how to start a, 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 a hire a doo-bop band and, and, and get the classic guy caught, the classic guy. But uh, but it, uh, that's the thing with people who... Uh, are in the fitness uh, and body shaping and uh, uh, training uh, as a lifestyle, you know, they want to take care of their bodies. You know, I often explain to a patient that you're, you're trained. This is in my philosophy. Number one, you got your the number one thing you have to have is your chiropractor and be well adjusted because that's the core of your body. It's a central nervous system that needs to be, uh, uh, that needs to be just right. Then the next is some type of muscular therapy, whether it be massage, whether it be a foam roller, roller balls, whatever, because on a constant basis, as a, as a lifter, you're going to have not knots that continually uh, start up. Or like what Dr. Joe was teaching me about how to work with your own uh, tennis elbow so that you can you know, work it and not have to see Dr. Joe all the time uh, uh, or Dr. Todd all the time. Yeah, you need to get it tuned correctly but then you need to do your own homework so you got chiropractic you got muscular work on my list is then core training training the core we had a, a, a tremendous core machine the all core 360 uh but uh, uh yoga pilates my wife is a pilates instructor she's one of the best in the world and that's no and it ain't no joke <laughs> and, and you know she's gonna likely be watching this later. <laughs> yes right she's the greatest yeah. in the world uh, no but she was actually tra uh, trained by R R romana ramaska who was joe literally was trained by joseph pilates so she was like the queen diva of pilates she never met joseph pilates because he died before she had mm -hmm. during training but she learned from the 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 the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, understudy, understudy of, right. of joseph pilates He's been doing it for 25 years. So you have to have some core component to your, your, your training regimen. Number three is, I think, strength training. I put it in that order for a reason. Because, you know, I like to, I never liked, oh, go to the gym, walk on the treadmill for seven minutes, and then start training. No, you train your core. Because when you're training your core, now every other strengthening exercise, your core is activated and can support you through mm -hmm. the other training exercises you, you, you do. Then number five is the uh, is high intensity interval training. Why waste? You know when when somebody comes in and says, "Oh, I walk five miles a day," or "I I walk for an hour today," I says, 
sit down because I'm going to save you a lot of time. They actually did studies, and this was at a few different, I can't remember the names of the universities. I'm not Christopher Kent or Dan Murphy, but uh, they took two groups. On, I think both of them were on a stationary bike. One group did 60 minutes of steady state cardio, meaning in the old days, get your get your 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 uh, heart rate up to about 60, 70 percent and continue on that steady state for an hour. OK, so they did that six hours a week. The other group, they did 20 minute high intensity interval sessions. High intensity being defined is you go slow and a burst of energy up to a hundred, if not over a hundred percent of your heart rate, which can only be sustained for a short period of time. That's why a sprinter could only run a hundred yards as fast as he can. And in fact, when we were kids, uh, when we when I was on track, we naturally did intervals. You would run the straightaway as fast as you could, and then you'd walk around the curve, and that was almost perfect. And then you run. A walk. I, I tell patients, walk a block, run a block, you know, uh, go fast, go slow. So you, you have your, your, your steady state, you bring it up to 100% for about 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds. When your breath is starting to get breathless and your muscles are burning, then you bring it back down and you recover for a couple of minutes. Then you go up, then you go down. So this group did that four days a week for 20 minutes. And when they measured their fitness potentials, their fitness levels, there was a massive increase on the four times 20 as compared to the six hours. So an hour and 20, six hours. Now what? Oh, that can't be true. How does that happen? Because when you go to 100% of your heart rate, no muscle in your body can hide. Every muscle is exposed. Just like we were talking, you were talking about strong men before. Mm -hmm. When you lift something heavy, everything is Engaged. challenged. Mm -hmm. So that's why when you are doing the hour walk at a steady state, humans were designed to do that. But that's why we're great hunters. We could follow that animal for hours and the animal gets ends up getting tired. But the human never does get tired. Why? Because in the normal state of static uh, 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 cardio, you're switching fibers on and off to conserve energy. So you're not using the whole muscle at all time. You're actually resting parts of your muscles while you're using other parts because it's kind of easy to do 70% of your heart rate. You can do that for a long time. Even in, you know, and, and I say to you know, patients, you know, elef elephants walk. So what, you're walking. You know, elephants walk, you know. Yeah. You gotta get, you gotta have that that that, that, that burst of, of energy. And that saves a lot. And then of course, the final thing that is overall all of this is your, your nutrition, you mm -hmm. know. And I make it easy for people. I say just eat whole foods that are the best organic, grass-fed, grass-finished, uh, wild-caught, uh, pasture-raised. Leany said live food. Live food, yeah. Not food. dead food. Right. Or well, food that was just almost alive. Right. It, it was alive a little while ago. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you got meat in the freezer for a year. You know, right. I, mean, you know I, don't, I don't think you want to eat it, but you get a, a nice steak that uh, from a cow from last week. <laughs> But yeah, but uh, you know, live food. You know, uh, the, I, I thought it's very interesting. He also said root foods. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he said yeah. He's he says like, it cleans your cleans your tubes out. Yeah, cleans your tubes out. He's <laughs> yeah, like always interested in, in cleaning his tubes out. <laughs> so uh, we got about twelve minutes left here, Doctor Joe. Let me turn it to you. I wanted uh, 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 we, we we talked to Todd about the different uh, injuries and strength athletes. Give me some of the. Uh, uh, Classic injuries you see with your different population, uh, boxers compared to gymnasts, compared to soccer players, compared to uh, baseball players. Can you just give me like what your philosophy on that? Okay. So uh, for me, uh, I have pro soccer players. I even had a pro polo player come in from Argentina who hurt his wrist whacking that mallet so hard. Right. And Too much know, horsing around. <laughs> and I said, man, uh, Thank God it's not water polo. You know how many horses drown every year? He looked at me again. Yeah. And so, you know, that's me again. But and so, as far as it goes, you know, there's they're going to be sports dependent. You know, uh, you know, a golfer, uh, South Florida is full of golf courses. So you get a ton of golfers coming in. And what is going to happen? It's going to be a lot of low back injuries, right? From the twisting motion. And what are they doing on the twist in motion that hurts and stops them suddenly? It's called a divot. And right. so they're whacking the club into the ground as hard as they can. And they go, and they go stop. Yeah. And they're like, you know, 
I need Dr. Joe, right? Because you got to swing in alignment again, you know? So the, then you're going to have a low back with a lot of those guys. Um, you know, with the, um, I have a lot of uh, pro dancers because uh, one of the guys in uh, my office just won the Red Bull Dance Challenge of Miami Beach, which was amazing break dancing type uh, open class dancing. And he won the whole Red Bull Challenge. And we're so proud of him, you know, but of course he has situations that when he's moving like that, it could be any one of his joints, right? Because every single joint, he comes up on a toe and he's down. And he, I mean, it's just amazing type of work. Hopping and locking, right? Hopping and locking. There it is. And uh, yeah, so that could be, you have to be ready for anything to happen there. Now, uh, football players, I have a lot of ex-football players that come in. And you're going to have a lot of neck injuries because what do they do when they're hitting stuff with Spear. their skull? You know, so the yeah. necks get jammed up and they get kyphotic. And you got to know, you know, a few different moves for that to relate, you know, release it. And so just remember, each athlete's going to have a specific situation that they're going to bring to the table uh, that could be very common. And I, I had mentioned basketball players with the knee pain because they're squatting down to get under the door. Also a lot of ankles, but we see a lot of ankles, ankles in our office. So. For basketball, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's joints of the lower joints of the of the lower extremity take a beating on tall yeah. people. Uh, yeah, you know, as well, yeah, just the fact that you're tall. Yes. Takes a beating. Yeah. And, yeah. and be a basketball player running back and forth on that court all day. It's hard work. Leaping and landing yeah. on somebody's foot. Oh, you know, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's that's that one. And, and of course, you know, I have um, the uh, the tennis players. So I have a big association from uh, Wimbledon. They come in and almost all of those guys are going to be upper neck and shoulder, upper extremity. Uh, and so some of the great moves of like getting in like Dr. Todd does with the uh, – the rib cage down low by the uh, lats where they where they innervate down there all these different moves to help them get back on the field and like it was mentioned earlier you know there is a difference in doing an athlete that needs to get back on the court they're in the middle of a tournament they're coming right. into you they don't have 24 to 48 hours to recover from this adjustment and rest through it and everything so you have to know also that your adjustment has to be short level and you have to be, you know, very precise that they can't, they're not going to expend a lot of energy. They're just going to get energy out of the adjustment. Yeah. And so, you know, those are the, the common South Florida, you know, people, the boxers, you know, we have a lot of those. And, and you know, like I said, I got blessed to, uh, which I didn't know. Uh, my father, who took a patient out of a wheelchair that said would never walk again, was uh, Mrs. Torino. In, in Queens and and, uh, and later on in life I got to take somebody out of a wheelchair that was uh, the fourth generations of people right now but that but Tommy Torino her, her nephew ends up he was the trainer for Muhammad Ali ends up in my office and I recognized the last day and I said I think my dad helped your aunt did she ever in a wheelchair he goes yeah that was the guy who was your dad and uh, you know it's small world stuff and so the great news about that is, is that, you know, when, again, when you deal with boxers, it's going to be a lot of neck injuries, a lot of upper back, shoulders, and of course, wrists. So most of the guys know how to hit properly. They're going to use the out, the, the big knuckles, not the small ones. Right. They've been wrapped and taught for years. So you're not going to have too many wrists. It's more going to be shoulders where they miss the punch yeah, and their arm hyper extends. Yeah, yeah. So that's a big one that comes out. Yeah. And I know you take care of a lot of pro athletes in Jersey, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. tell us a little bit about yours. Well, you listen, uh, uh, you know, they, they got a few pro golfers, uh, they had a few pro football players. And, uh, uh, but I have a lot of people, I kind of specialize more, not in, in, in pro athletes, but in just regular gym folk. You know, because regular gym folk, they're always looking for the advantage. They're always looking, they always hurt themselves because they don't know what they're doing. You know, and uh, in our practice, we give a lot of instruction 
on how to lift prop, you know, how to lift weights properly. We, uh, we, we do an interesting technique whenever we're given a patient, let's say we're given a, a, a core sequ- a core exercise sequence. We take their phone. We say, you're going to be the star of your own fitness video. And then Dr. Mike or, or one of our assistants will film me instructing them mm-hmm. so that when they go home, because in the old days, you used to have all these sheets of paper, you know, you circle, yeah. do this exercise, do that exercise. So here they feel, we put them through the act, they feel the motion, so they learn kinesthetically. They're, then they go home with hearing me tell them again and again how to do the exercise. And then, then so they got auditory learning, and then they got the visual learning. So that would be a big tip for everybody, is when you are giving any types of postural training, any type of exercise, have your assistant film it for them and it makes them feel really special you can know? we share some of those techniques today in this little video what do you mean well like with the band the uh the postural things that we had talked about earlier today with the band instead of a uh yeah you, pvc bike well, we have we have five minutes left why don't you show why don't you, you do that, that stretch yeah that'd be good. but show, show, yeah. show us that stretch all right just make let sure we're still get it real quick so so the, the interesting thing about this is uh, came to my mind that a lot of people use PVC pipes. Right. And, uh, you know, most of the time that is what I call, well, I structurally it's called an open pack, right? right? So basically when you're in that position, you're opening up and moving through different movement patterns to go ahead and try and get things a little bit warmed up, right? right. But I actually had one of my athletes as a, as a golfer and uh, he had a little bit of a curvature in his mid back. And so, um, you know, you give me five minutes, I think about things, right? Which maybe I shouldn't be left alone very long, Dave, right? No, you guys know that. You know that's true. So, but anyway, so I thought, you know, what if we would go ahead and try and create an activation using a band, but still do the same kind of things that you would do with a PVC pipe? And so come up with something that actually is a great postural well, answer, right? right? So, so anyway, what you do is you go ahead and you get, you know, into this position here. And you got to get it high, right in through here, right? And then I like to go ahead and hold my fist out just like this. Now, if you notice, I'm like in a cross position, right? Just like that. So what I want to try and do is keep my, my hips and everything loose. So I go ahead and just rotate. I'm not really forcing anything, but what happens is, is that the shoulders are now closed the posterior chain in my back, if you will, is actually activated. And what's happening is, is that I'm in closed pack position, which creates a high level of stability in all of the joints and in my movement patterns, right? So I can also go ahead and go side to side, just like I would do with a PVC pipe. And I do about 10 of those each side. So I'm gonna shorten it up here a little bit. All right, and then I like coming in through and doing this motion, which Pete says is more like a discus move. Well, it's that's also a three quarter shot in bodybuilding, right? Yeah, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I can't do. I don't think shot. I can do that anymore, right? Yeah. So, but anyway, you go in through here, and then the next phase, and I'm kind of going from the back, so you kind of be a little bit more objective. Well, my head's up during all of those things. The other thing is trying to get my head to touch my shoulders. And apparently this is pretty significant as far as the the brain function doing the lateral bending. And then look over your shoulder, look over your shoulder, look over your shoulder, and you do that 10 times as well. Now, what you'll do that, you'll do that about, about a minute, you know? So as you go through that process, and you'll find that this is actually very, very challenging as a whole. Yeah. yeah. So, but anyway, I, I didn't want to get away from that. Um, like I said, I made it up and uh, somebody said that, you know, maybe you should name it after something, but I'm not sure what we should name it after. The, the, the McDougal strap. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that could go the wrong. Stomach, the stomach <laughs> execution. <laughs> something like that. So anyway, um, I know, Dr. Joe, you do something really similar after you get finished up with your, uh, your patients after an adjustment. Would you share that? Uh, Where you have the handout? Yeah, it's called the rhomboid roll. Okay. And that's what okay. I called mine. Right. And, and what I'm doing is engaging the top part of the body. You turn around for a quick second. Mm-hmm. From here up to the neck by taking the rhomboids here and flexing them. 
by taking the, by the hands up, bring them back, then lock your neck in by bringing your chin up high and just circle backwards, rolling the hands back, round boy roll. And then what's going to happen? I'm going to get out of the way so they can see you. All these muscles are contracting, and you just do it for 10 seconds. And what happens is drop your hands, your shoulders end up in perfect yeah, yeah. So a lot of the people that I use that one, I use a different one. That one is good for kids on computers. And, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. they're carrying a lot of bags at school yeah. and, they're, and they're rounding their shoulders and they want to get them back. Right. How do I get my shoulders back? You can get your thoracics back right. down, get rid of this hump in your back, first of all. Get the spine where it needs to be, and then rhomboid roll throughout the day. Do you know what's really cool about that is that those that kind of concept can be tied to a computer concept. Yeah. Maybe we should try to call it like a chiro athletic thing. Maybe, yeah, I love Maybe we should do that. that you know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So what you got? Listen. What you got, Pete? <laughs> 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 uh, we're out of time, but I just we just want to stress. That the three of us, as the leaders of Cairo, the Cairo Athletic Movement, our real mission is to teach chiropractors to adjust again, but and adjust people who are in my practice. I say everybody's an athlete, even a little old lady. Why? Because we give them exercise, we give them things to do. It's about performance, it's right? About, it's about it's about it's about performance. So right. our goal with our chiro, chiro athletic techniques, our drop techniques, our sports techniques, our craniosacral techniques, is to educate you. And our venues are many times at these type of shows where there's a physical culture going on, where people are interest, interested in physical culture. So make sure you you, you check us out. If you have any questions, you can contact us at chiroathletica.net. That's C H I R O A T H L E T I C A dot net. Right there. Yeah. Net. Yeah, there we go. There it is. <laughs> there it is. And of course, you know, we're, we worked this year again with the uh, Lee Haney. We worked with the best. Lee Haney. And then, of course, the International Chiropractic Association. That's so right. Chiropractic.org. Yeah is uh we we're working with a lot as well so right, right. we've got a, we've got an interesting you know team and you yeah. know obviously going international would be kind of yeah we have we have leaders but we have we have uh, we have uh, strength trainers we have yeah. professional stretchers uh you know right. that, 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 that do stretch labs like like stretch like, workouts, Pamela. like Pamela. Pamela, right we have uh, yeah. uh, 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 uh 65 year old female bodybuilders of maritza martina yeah martinez yeah. Uh, uh, Lee stuck to Lisa out of Chicago. She's one of our our, our, our superhero team of yeah. Avengers. We always like we're the did, Avengers. Did we include Lee Haney in our team? Lee Haney's he's on, yeah, he's part in of, our team. He's on our team. Okay, he's so he's in the team. He's the Hulk. You're Iron Man. That's good. He's the thing. I'm Thor. Lee's the Hulk. There it is. There it is. Why not? Why not, why not be comic book superheroes, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. We hope to see you down at one of our events. Hopefully, you picked up a few things, huh? Yeah. Get out there and change the world. It's fun. That was a great panel. Thank you.